Hey guys, I'm Joel. Welcome back to a new video. In this one, we're gonna be doing all the prep work to the E30 before we can actually get the engine in because there's a few things that I wanna change. The first one being the ABS. When I first built this car, I put the ABS in because I didn't know if I was gonna actually be able to make it work or not. But as said, I'm gonna put it in just in case if I do wanna go through the effort of making it work. But I didn't wanna go through the effort of making it work because it kinda just was pointless. I spun out in front of the cop with the pump and all the stuff being on there and the ABS still didn't work. <laughs> After that, I'm like, okay, the worst thing that could happen has already happened, but that's besides the point, whatever. What I'm gonna do now is take this all out and I'm also gonna cut the brackets out to make it look kinda nice. And also, my friend Pat, shout out to you Pat, he ran his wiring through the fender on the other side of the engine bay and it came back out through like a hole that he drilled right here. And I think that's way better than what I had there. I didn't even think about it, but if I can hide all that, it will make it look so much better. And then once I delete this ABS, I also want to put the catch can somewhere here. First things first, I can start by taking all the brake fluid out. Why is that so tight? Oh my God. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it to my fuel pressure regulator, I'm gonna be able to move it to where my old breather tank was. My old breather tank was sitting right here on the shock tower. Fuel pressure regulator there, ABS deleted, and then catch can right in this corner. Ooh, I'm liking this. And wiring on the other side. One big thing that I regretted after I put my engine in was I didn't put my grommets in. It's so hard to get these grommets in once the engine is in. So I'm gonna try and fully seal the firewall so that I don't feel any air coming through the firewall because it makes such a big difference in the season that it is. If it's summer, it's hot as hell in the car and if it's winter, it's cold as shit in there. So I wanna, I wanna try and seal it all fully. I'm hoping this doesn't leak too much, but I gotta take them off. I'm gonna be repainting this anyway, so. Also, another note, do not use a wire wheel on stock brake nuts. They will start rusting, so just get new ones. It is never worth reusing those, and I learned my lesson, because if I would've kept driving this with these fittings on there, it would have been bad news. These were scaring me actually, so it's good that I have a, an excuse to change them. There we go, dripping brake lines. Hold them up so that the brake fluid doesn't drip this way, it'll go that way. Yeah, I need to disconnect the wiring. And the ground, one more thing. I can go throw this into the woods. Another pretty annoying thing, I have an M52 throttle body on an M50 intake manifold. When you have an M52 throttle body and an E30, you need an E36 cable. If you have an M50 throttle body on an E30, then you need the M50 throttle cable. So the throttle cable correlates to whatever throttle body you have. This is an E90 master and booster setup and my M52 throttle cable kind of comes in contact with it, so I had to run it through the middle, which is pretty annoying. The back one is the one that goes to the front brakes.
I took everything from the M52, like all the gaskets, and piled them up because I'm gonna return them to FCP Euro. They have a lifetime warranty that you buy them once and then anytime you buy them and replace them, you just send them back to them and they replace them. I'm not sure how much they refund you, but I don't know if it's the amount you paid when you first ordered it or the amount you paid when you order it again. Because all this is way more expensive now than when I first bought them three years ago. This is my third time rebuilding this engine and FCP Euro has replaced everything on the engine for me three times now. So their lifetime warranty is crazy. I'm curious to see the difference. Right now I paid $600 for those rings and bearings and everything and two years ago I paid $400. So am I going to get $400 back or am I going to get $600 back? I gotta go bring them to FCP Euro. They're only 40 minutes away from me. That was a big reason why I decided to get a European car because FCP Euro is literally right down the street. So I just drive it over to them, get all my parts replaced. So here's everything that's getting the lifetime warranty. I'm not sponsored or anything, by the way. They're just a big reason of why I got my car. So let's go see. Four or $600, what am I gonna get back? It's been a few days now, but FCP ended up giving me the full price that I paid as of a few weeks ago. So they ended up giving me $600 back instead of the 400 that I thought they were gonna give me. That's amazing. I even called them and asked them and they said that, yeah, it's always whatever you pay after the fact. So no matter how much it changes, after the fact is what they reimbursed you. So that's <laughs> huge plus to them. Now I need to work on the chassis. I need to start removing the ABS brackets that sit right here. So I'm going to cut these three right here, make it all smooth. Got all the brackets cut out. Now my job is to smooth everything out, make sure everything is looking all nice and good, and then I can come in and give it a nice coat of paint. I came in with the angle grinder and the flat disc, smoothened everything out just to get it kind of flat, and then I'm gonna come in with some Bondo. Here we have it. By no means is it pretty, but this is like five, 10 minutes of grinding and it's all smooth now. This is a good base coat to start off with. So I can clean everything up, get everything nice and prepared. And we can start prepping that for paint. It's finally clicked in my head exactly how the ABS delete is gonna work. And how I did it was on this website. I'll link it in the description, the whole right through of how to do this, but it was all in words. So I had to put it in picture. <laughs> but the triple union right here, I'm gonna be using this little block and this is the OEM block that sits in the rear of the car that goes from the left and the right caliper and that's one of those and I have a Willwood proportioning valve for my brake so I can adjust the brake bias. And now I'm gonna be able to tune my brakes so I'm not gonna be able to spin out in front of a cop again. I'm gonna be able to adjust it so that my front brakes lock up before my rear brakes so if I ever do come to a situation where I slam on the brakes and the brakes lock up it's gonna be the front this time and not the rear. So the <laughs> this is gonna be for the better. So the rear port on the master cylinder is gonna go to the top of the fitting right here. And then the fitting is just breaking up the front brakes. This one's gonna go to the passenger side caliper. And then this one's gonna go to the driver side caliper. And this one's coming again from up there. And then the front fitting on the master cylinder is gonna go to the rear brakes. So in my situation, I'm gonna have this front master cylinder going straight to this proportioning valve right here, and then the out is gonna go straight to the rear brakes to the back of the car. Now while I wait for those brake fittings to come, 
I'm gonna properly mount this fuse for my e-fan. I've always just had it kind of sitting here. And there's already a stud. I wanna get this fuse mounted up in there. I'm just gonna make that hole a little bit bigger. And I need to cut off this little bracket on that left side so that it'll sit nicely in there. And that relay comes in, the red wire comes and gives power directly to the e-fan. So that fan is running off a relay and, and it gets it switched ground from the ECU. So that's what controls my e-fan. First things first, I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect that. Now I can. Now with this little plastic nut that BMW uses, it threads right into that factory stud. There we have it, it's mounted, it's nice and solid. I started to run the wiring for the relay behind the fender and one of them is good, but it's a little bit short. It comes out and I need to extend it a little bit just to get to this circuit breaker. And then this yellow one goes to my ECU, so I needed to pull it either out of my ECU or the relay. So I pulled it out of the relay, and all you gotta do is push this pin, it sits exactly like this when it's inside of the relay. You gotta push that pin so it's flat, and then the pin will come right out. Gotta take it out at the pit stop midway, just so I can get all the line pulled through. So now I can just push this extra wire back in here and tuck it away. Here we go. The relay is plugged back in fully, and my wire is kind of tucked. My bubble flare brake fittings came, and these are stainless steel. These are the first time me buying some stainless brake nuts. I hope they work well. They should though, I don't see why not. The link is gonna be down in the description. I got them on Amazon. Now this rear brake line came out to the ABS pump, but now I can shorten it to about here, and then right where my hand is, is where the little three-way junction is gonna sit. So I can plumb that in right there. I am gonna tighten the brake line in all the way just so I can get exact fitment. That's kind of what I learned with working with brake lines. You want to tighten it up all the way so that you know exactly everything is sitting where you want it to sit. I kind of try and tuck it into this back pocket, straighten out this brake line a little bit and then have it come down closer towards the firewall right back over here. Now since the fitting is tight at the master cylinder, I can move the brake line and form it into place. It's gonna come into the top here. The bottom is gonna go to the driver's side caliper. It's gonna be sitting right there. And then this, this side is gonna go right behind the booster over to the passenger brake caliper. And that's actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna mark it so I can go and make the fitting on the bench. Give it a good old cut. I cannot forget the fitting. You gotta straighten the line out so that the fitting goes on. You gotta straighten a pretty good amount of it too so that it doesn't interfere with the bubble flare tool. Very lightly try and do that. Yeah, there we go. Now this has to be stupid tight from my experience with these cheap tools. Ugh! That should be good. <laughs> it's so tight. I've never had a setup this solid before, what? Hopefully this works better.
Yeah. yeah. Let's go. That is a bubble flare. That's the trick. Use this to tighten it up. If you don't use this, it's going to slip around and not be fun. It does do a little bit of marring on the brake line, but if you have copper, it's not that bad. If you have that steel brake line, it ends up chewing the coating that the steel brake lines have. Those green ones. Damn, that looks good though. Now this is going to be going into here. There it is, somewhat partly installed. I just need to disconnect the driver caliper. Before disconnecting it though, I'm gonna give it a nice mark. Now, I don't want this fitting on here. I want two new fittings, so I'm probably just gonna do a whole new line. Because if I try and straighten this, let's see. Well, actually, it'll, it'll go. I'm bending more and more of it, and it's very malleable, but if I'm gonna do two brand new fittings, I might as well should just use brand new line. I'm just gonna make it about that long. <laughs> My Sharpie line is right here, so I'm just gonna make it this long. Looks like a pretty good bubble flare to me. There we go, two brand new stainless steel fittings on there. I can go bend it to shape now. One bend I can make preemptively is the one coming straight off the caliper. It's gonna have to bend 90 degrees. So off of any fitting, I'm guessing I could just let it rip. We're all plugged in, ready to go behind the wheel. Now I may have made it a little bit too long, but that's fine. Cause I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this fitting. I might have accidentally made it the absolutely perfect size. <laughs> Look at that radius. That's a good looking bend right there. So now for me to connect the last line, I need to make a little more room so I can disconnect this rear brake line that used to go to the ABS. That'll allow me enough room to bend this line down, get it in position, and then I need to pull it back up and do the fitting up here because it goes all the way around there. Put this mark here a few days ago because in the write-up it says that you got to cut it right there so i'm just going to cut it right there there we go i got a little more room don't forget the fitting That looks like a good bubble flare. Let's go. Everything looks good to go. Everything is tight now in that T-junction. Last thing now is the rear brake line. The brake proportioning valve fits perfectly right there on the frame rail in the factory threaded hole. So I'm just gonna trim this bolt down a little bit so that it fits better, because the bolt is too long. But this brake line is gonna come from this 
right into where my thumb is and it's gonna come out right over to that back fitting over there. Damn, I'm cutting right into my backpack, what the hell? I should have had a nut on there before so you can just unthread it and it cleans the thread automatically. But I think I can save it. Yes, it's not damaged. If you cut in between threads, it's it'll be fine, but if you cut like on the thread, it'll mess it up and you won't be able to thread a nut on. Right there, I cleaned the thread up and now it's fine. Yeah, that is so good. I'll be able to hopefully easily adjust this when the engine is in. I don't think anything obscures that right there. I'm pissed. I started bending the lines out of 90 instead of just making them smooth for just the last one because I wanted room to put my hand in here and like be able to work this valve, you know? <laughs> but I'm mad because it looks really good and now it's like square and it like looks really good but then nothing else is square. Like this is round, this is round and then this is square. So I might try and bend and then bend and then bend. I don't know. I'm honestly having a blast bending this last bend line. I've been having so much fun just sitting here trying to get the bends all perfect. And to get it to sit exactly how I want it to sit, I was gonna use the old one as a template and then cut out a piece of the new one. But I made it fit so good that I was like, whatever, I'm gonna just <laughs> use the old one. Okay, it's kinda hard to show, I apologize, but this back line right here is the one that I'm talking about. So I got the bend nice so that I tuck it towards the firewall and then it just comes up behind the T and then comes right back down into the block over there where I gotta go. So once I put this brick line inside of the proportioning valve, the line just wraps around perfectly over there and straight back down into here. I just gotta trim it. There it is, the full ABS delete. It's so much cleaner now. I, I should have done this from the beginning because it looks and it's gonna perform so much better. I'm gonna actually be able to have the front brakes lock up before, and I can just come in. Ideally, with the engine in, I can just bring my arm right down here and just give that a little twist. I don't think there's gonna be anything interfering with that, so I think that's the perfect location for that. And it just, everything looks so good. Stainless steel fittings was definitely the move. I'm never using steel fittings again. It's always stainless from now on, because just look at that. <laughs> I realized after the fact that I'm definitely going to use that hole that's already in the body right there to just step it up with the drill bit and run the chassis harness through there. So I'm going to have to take these wires back out. I thought they were going to be there for good, but at least while it's there, I can extend this power wire so that it can reach the circuit breaker. I'm going to splice it about here so that the Tesla tape will cover it. You only want the wire to be about as long as the crimp allows, so it's not very long. I'm gonna plug the other end of the wire into the breaker so that I can have a pretty accurate way to measure the length. <laughs> it's only that much wire, damn it! I'm gonna leave it a little bit of slack. Give it a nice pull, it doesn't come out. There we go. These heat shrink crimps are the only crimps that I actually trust. This is a really important wire so I can't have a crimp fail on me because this powers the E-fan. So my car could really easily overheat but once you heat those up, I feel really good about that connection right there and them not falling out or getting corroded. 
So I think this is a perfect place to end this video. I normally would want to get more done and have it be like more stuff got done throughout the video, but this stuff takes a lot of time and I feel like I just finished a, a big portion of what I had to do. Now I've been taking my time and going very slowly with rebuilding the M52 behind me as you guys may know because I was adapting a really bad habit of feeling like the world was collapsing on me if it wasn't done now and I would get into these really bad mindsets of I need to finish the car now as soon as possible and I would like it was just really bad so I'm trying to pace myself now and I'm trying to breathe a little bit enjoy the moments while they're here enjoy the car while it's down and I can do all the stuff that I've wanted to do from the beginning like get a better catch can setup and all that stuff so if I could just spend a little time refreshing everything I don't think it would hurt but I'm gonna end it now <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching follow me on Instagram right here to see everything that I'm up to and yeah thank you for watching